Good morning, uh, I am David Iglesias. I'm with Mark Hernandez from La Tempesta Company. We will make this presentation to explain uh, our experience uh, using photogrammetry for digitizing the CRDI collection on diorotypes. Uh, I will make a short introduction to explain wh what's the collection about, this collection of diorotypes, and for you to have an idea of the importance of uh, digitizing this in, in 3D. Uh, first of all, it's a big collection. It's 117 uh, daguerreotypes, that it's quite a lot uh, for, the, for this uh, photographic technique. And there are two main groupings. And one uh, uh, is the Angel Fuentes collection. And it's worth it, to, worth it to mention this name because he was a conservator who died uh, six years ago. And he was uh, really a specialist uh, with an international recognition. Uh, and he was very linked to the city of Girona. So we had this, uh, the opportunity to buy this collection. Um, now we have it uh, with us. And then there is uh, no, another important collection of 24 daguerreotypes uh, that comes from uh, Gibraltar uh, in a location uh, close to, to Barcelona. Uh, the, most of the daguerreotypes, the, uh, the author is unknown, but uh, we know that most of them are from the United States, or from England, and some are from Catalonia. Uh, there are authors like um, the Americans, like Thompson and Silas, or the, uh, from the United Kingdom, uh, Negretti and Zambra, and from Barcelona, Frank uh, and Antonio Fernandez, or Anais Tifon. It is important, this collection, from different points of view. For example, from, for technology. For technology, because it allows us to build a story about the early years of the history of, of photography. Because the daguerreotype is the first photographic image in parallel with calotypes in the United Kingdom. Uh, so it's a unique image. It took many hours uh, to, uh, to uh, give a, a final image so the preparation uh, needs uh, so much time nothing to do with, what, what, with the digital photography that everything goes so quick and uh, it, it can be re reproduced uh, it's a, a negative and a positive at, at the same time and uh, the whole image uh, needs uh, some other elements that I will explain later so we cannot uh, think in an image separately. Uh, it's the whole object. So that's why it's so important to digitize in 3D. It doesn't happen with other photographic images because are usually flat images and there is not much to see. But in this case, uh, the daguerreotype is what we, the experience is with the whole object. Then it's also important for the cultural point of view, because it started in 1839, uh, this technique, and this is the period of engravings. So images are represented using engravings. And the first daguerreotype, like this one, uh, actually it's written on the bottom, comes from a daguerreotype. So this is a daguerreotype, but it was reproduced uh, using uh, engravings. Most of them that are not abused, but uh, portraits. So this is the time that people had the opportunity, wealthy people had the opportunity to, uh, to have a portrait. So uh, in our collection, most are, are portraits. And these two that I show you now, uh, sorry. These two are uh, from collections from people uh, from Girona families. Uh, uh, of the city. That, that is a vari an important variety uh, of, of objects, as you can see uh, in this slide, because not all are um, images in, in these uh, cases, that was something very used in, in, in America, but there are also these, these frames, these continental or French uh, frames, uh, they were called uh, this way. And there are also st stereoscopic images because stereoscopic uh, begins at uh, 1851, so uh, mm, same time of, of, of the daguerreotype period. And then all these objects, many, many, uh, all these jewels uh, with different types, shapes, etc. So the variety is it's very rich. 
but the usual ones are these you see uh, on the screen, the continental frame or uh, the cases. And to have an idea of the importance, to make it mm, in context, uh, I think it's important to mention this project Daguerre base because I tried to make an inventory of, of Daguerre types in Europe. And if you foc we focus on Spain, uh, they identified 1,200 uh, daguerreotypes. And if we mm, go to, uh, we focus on, on Catalonia collections, the biggest one was uh, the one from uh, Museo Mares, or one museum in Barcelona, with 92 daguerreotypes, or uh, the one of the photographic archives in Barcelona, that's 35 more or less, or the Museum of Technique is 32 or something like that. So uh, the CRDI, uh, uh, CRDI collection is important and this number is meaningful uh, if we compare with the collections outside. And another... I don't think the slides are changed. No? Oh, no. The, and now one important aspect to mention is that <coughs> we are now very enthusiastic with 3D, digitizing all things. But what, when you uh, receive a collection like this, the more important thing is uh, the preservation. Yes. So uh, we need we need to uh, to see what are the problems with with these images because they are very sensitive. For example, daguerreotypes are dyed with the oxygen, so they need to be stamped uh, uh, with uh, with the uh, with the glass, the copper glass. So we need to, to uh, work on this. Is and that was the first thing we we we. We met with it with our collection, huh? so everything was restored, and we changed the classes that have uh, problems. Uh, some are broken, but there are problems with lixiviation or whatever. So I think this is we cannot forget this because it's a crucial aspect. Otherwise, the digital experience that doesn't exist. It's also important to focus on content. I won't say much about this, but these are portraits and uh, it explains very well uh, the society of the period and you can focus on different elements like uh, how they are represented, these girls with a book, they choose to, to be represented with a book or with the jewels uh, of these ladies, these women. Uh, one of the images in color, but it, we are not the period that the color existed for photography, so uh, the, they, they were hand colored. Uh, how families were represented and post mortem, uh, you know, that uh, people had no opportunity to be photographed during life, so some of them were, had just one image that was uh, when they died. And this, this happened often with, with children at this period, uh, mid 19s. And the last thing uh, that we have to understand uh, what we analyze uh, in a 3D is all the elements that are part of a daguerreotype. Uh, we have seen these cases, uh, but these cases can be uh, leather, uh, can be thermoplastic, like union cases, and with different decoration because there are catalogs. Uh, the, there was an, indus an industry that uh, provide all these materials. So uh, cases are, is one of the things. And also the cases have these, uh, the pads, no? the case pads, uh, sometimes with the name of the photographer or with advertising, with different colors, with different decoration. So there are many details that uh, mm, we should uh, mm, uh, take into account and pay attention to understand the period and how is um, the, whole, the whole object. No? Also, uh, the, the mats, uh, the mats is uh, B, uh, you see, uh, that separates the plate, uh, the plate with the final image uh, from the, with the glass. So uh, it's uh, uh, something that it's needed. And uh, there are very different uh, types of, 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 of mats. Uh, uh, the shape could be oval or octagon or elliptic, that is the double elliptic, etc. Also, also the preserver that holds together the image with the mat and the copper glass, that is uh, uh, D, I think, uh, uh, and that uh, it started in 1847, uh, and there are different uh, types uh, of, of, of preservers. Mm? So, 
all the elements constitute the diagrammatic object, and uh, if you, we have a knowledge and experience on this, then we can analyze this uh, with the 3D object that Mark will explain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thanks. Okay, uh, do you hear me well? Yeah? Okay. Good morning and thanks for, for having me here. And I will briefly introduce myself. My name is Mark Hernandez and I'm the director of La Tempesta. Um, it's a full service digital company and we create and we develop, we design digital mediation and new media tools for cultural heritage knowledge and, and content based organizations and also their communities. That's what we basically do. Um, we are a multidisciplinary team. We are based in Barcelona, downtown, and you are all very welcome to visit us yeah, when, when you come to Barcelona. And okay, we have we started in 2019. Even though our experience is is, is wider, we were lobby award winners for best cultural project, uh, historical heritage in this case of the Barcelona Zoo, which is also a cultural institution. Uh, and uh, we are working in 3D in different uh, projects. For example, this one, we are working in 3D and Metaverse. Okay, in also in a, um, it's a project that will be launched uh, next month. Okay, so we are allowing Ukrainian artists also to, deploy, uh, to, to show their, their, their artwork. And in this case, you can see um, the Krakiv. It's um, an Ukrainian public uh, library that was bombed. And, and then scanned and put into the metaverse. Okay, introduction ended. And uh, the Daguerreotype collection of the CRDI, this fantastic collection that David already explained, everything is complex in the Daguerreotype world, eh? even, <laughs> even you say the morphology, everything. Um, and as you can see, there is a slight detail here, which is <laughs> the Daguerreotypes are basically mirrors. Okay, um, so it's even a challenge for a photographer to, to, to take a regular uh, 2D picture. So imagine uh, having to take 150 pictures to make a 3D model. So the basically, the uh, challenge was that uh, building a 3D model using plain photogrammetry technique. So we basically thought, okay, this is something that for sure will somebody had done before, and we started to look uh, in the internet, and what we found is super nice 3D models of the daguerreotypes that were completely fake. They were modeled, okay? So, this started to look a little like suspicious, why people are modeling something that can be done with photography. Well, it's, the, the answer you will understand later uh, is that it's not that obvious to, uh, to make it with photogrammetry. The happy end is that it can be done, as we will see. But um, the challenge of the project was not faking the result, not making a 3D model idealization of what the photo the, the aerotype would look like. So um, the complexity comes, as I said, because uh, it's brightness, light reflection, positive and negative at the same time, uh, multiple moving parts, the case leads, the, the closures and hooks that move, and the chains, the rig, etc. And as you know, um, uh, we uh, the camera needs to be uh, photographed from both directions, eh? upside down. And, okay, so when you move it, uh, the hook also moves. Okay, so and when you move it, you have to be really precise not to move the leads, otherwise the result can be, of course, affected. Eh? And, okay, so we had to figure out how can we do that because it's very important that the aerodyne doesn't reflect any surface that it's not black. So we make this huge light box, okay, and it was like three meters high and you could make a small party here if you want, yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, we had... Um, uh, also, yeah, the black backdrop, um, the rotating platform was inside, and we had to design specific APS uh, and supports to, because of course, as you've seen, the variety 
of shapes and the morphology is so also wide that that I mean we were pretty um, involved in into cutting and there was also a manual work so it's a digital project that has done uh, where we have done a lot of manual work also and of course the, the focus the light etc so the photo taking we used three professional cameras um, in different heights okay um, this uh, was basically uh, because we need to optimize the, the process so it was not only um, digitizing one the but 99 so you can imagine all this complexity need to be like reduced and optimized so it was kind of a tailorist eh, effort eh, to optimize everything and we finally got to the conclusion that uh, 24 pictures for at three levels and up and, 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 and up and down so it was at the end over 144 pictures plus some pictures of details that perhaps needed an extra uh, coverage like for example yeah the the, the more like external parts you know that, that tend to go out of focus yeah we use the hyperfocal technique yeah where everything at the end is is mostly defined and and okay as i said yeah the the, the adaptation to the to the casuistic and, and the shape of every every daguerreotype um so here comes the video which i don't know if it will display is it moving yeah okay it's a simulation of of, of a part of this uh, and you will see that some reflections also happen. It was impossible at all uh, to, to basically eliminate all of them. Um, but at the end, the nice thing of the photogrammetry is that um, you have all these pictures and then you choose which pictures are really the best. Okay? Um, and you basically reject also part of the material. The idea is not to introduce too much noise into the 3D model processing because otherwise the result won't be okay. So, um, yeah. So this is um, description of, of the process uh, we followed. I think it's perhaps <laughs> now it's too hard to, to go into all these steps. I mean, um, uh, I will share the presentation because our idea is that our efforts are. Uh, replicable into other other uh, uh, institutions that want to, to use that but okay this was um, let's say uh, as a, a research uh, project also so we we, we had a, a team of uh, four people um, myself and a photographer and and two 3d technicians uh, Paul and, and Raquel that are here today and and so um, we started trying to find uh, the, the, the good approach with one camera and I, I also want to thank David because David was uh, our, uh, was patient enough and, and to, to give us the, the, the confidence to keep on trying and, and going into this scientific uh, research project which is perhaps something that we didn't foresee that uh, all this research would be necessary and when we finally um, were able to have a good result then we thought on how to make this in a big scale so that's where we started with the three cameras three laptops and all this uh, technique of optimizing the process okay um, so as a conclusion um, well here you have a video of one of the of the the types um, <clears throat> you can see well um, it looks uh, pretty pretty defined and you can even see like the the details in the plate and also when it turns there are some handwritten um, words that 
can be red also. If you get close to it, okay. Yeah. So it's uh, at the end high definition what we are getting, uh, and it's uh, the, the important thing is that the details can be seen, and, and at the end also we think it's an affordable technique for most institutions. I mean, you need good cameras, but for the consortium, I guess everyone has a good camera here. And you need uh, powerful laptops, or you have a super poor computer, like uh, Matthews, uh, even better, but with a powerful laptop, with a power graphic uh, card, it's, it's, it can be possible to, uh, to work like that. And, um, okay, there are different strategies, but what the one we get, okay, was, was successful. So, um, the limits uh, of, the, of the technique, that the, of course there are limits also, the re, because the, this scientific effort was very, very hard, because um, if you change something, then you have to like uh, process everything and see the result and then start again. So we were into this never-ending scientific test, experimenting and, and correcting and assessing, etc. And the light has to be absolutely homogenic, etc., etc. Okay? And, Basically, what was paramount for us was um, using masks. Okay, masks allows to basically um, tell the, the software, take into account everything except what is masked. And then you can use what is interesting for the result and hide what it's not. Okay, so masking was, was paramount. And here um, we are comparing uh, a regular photograph with a, with a 3D model, okay. So, what I was telling you before is that um, we think that it's, um, um, I mean, the heritage interest of having this photogrammetry is much superior to having an idealization 3D model because you can see, like, you see, you see the cases um, um, uh, deteriorate and, and sometimes yeah, the, the dark zones are also present in the original model. Um, I mean, the detail is pretty, and, and the textile materials have also the same, uh, the same. Uh, you see, the, the, the cross here is already also here. Okay, the mouse is is not <laughs> sorry. Well, so. Um, basically what I wanted to, to comment and thank you for your attention. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, I think very impressive, I, I have to say. It's, uh, it looks it looks to me uh, like an, a very complex procedure that you know you need to have a plan and you know by trial by error you've managed to find the right the right uh, plan. So I think it was uh, uh, very uh, insightful, at least for me. Um, there will be a workshop later on, I would say. That's uh, yeah. something I'm going to say now. It's uh, 3 o'clock, but only for those who registered. So, and only for those who are present uh, here. So you cannot take a, a part uh, online. Um, and maybe there are questions here regarding this uh, process of uh, free di digitization. Please, Antonella. Yeah. When uh, I have seen that the visualization of this 3D model of the uh, daguerreotype, I, I had the desire to follow it, to move the yeah. pieces. Is this something that you are planning? Uh, yeah, well, um, in fact, um, the, the, the thing is we had 99 daguerreotypes, so we started in this project to give them like the same uh, basic treatment, which, and we also choose to, to give the positive image of the daguerreotype, not to animate them. Um, in fact, this would um, simply be like e adding extra um, effort to the project, and the, the objective was delivering on time of this huge amount of daguerreotypes. So we put all, all our effort in have a systematic way, approach, uh, replicable, and that uh, could lead us to the, the final result. But starting from here, I mean, 
we can add all the extra even uh, special effects. We can give this positive negative uh, by adding post processing. Um, that will lead to a next question: will be um, in which extent are you reflecting the exact uh, original um, uh, object? Uh, but in the case that that you mean uh, uh, opening and closing, yeah, that would be perfectly possible. But um, I guess some tricks uh, will be needed also because uh, the um, okay yeah some is a matter of adding hours. Uh, uh, answering your question, uh, we had the idea and the project to create a virtual lab for a daguerreotype because we uh, organized an exhibition in Barcelona in, in the Maffer Foundation. So we had the money for this at the beginning, uh, but, be, but be, uh, and using virtual, um, these, these virtual glasses, um, like the ones that Arthur uh, are working uh, with different projects. So, uh, but because of COVID, they rejected to this because it was uh, on-site exhibition um, and people should go there and use the classes. And so they didn't pay for this and the project uh, uh, stopped. <laughs> but it's possible, of course. We start actually working on this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, any other question? Yes, Sophie. Yeah, well, um, now we are uh, prepared to, to scale it now. Uh, we were not, perhaps, we, we need to, to learn it during the process. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure um, there, there's some automatic masking, but there is, part of the masking is also manual. So, I mean, it's not really easy. Um, auto the automatization is not possible for, for all the steps. Some of them will keep the manual. So we invested. For example, um, four hours of technician, uh, but at the end it was like two hours only uh, with the MetaShape uh, support. Uh, I'm not counting in this time the, 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 the photo session, okay, the, for so the photo dating, but from four hours to two hours, depending on the. But um, we at the end when we were familiar with everything, we, we were like mm, like uh, narrowing all this the time invested. But yes, yes, it's it's now it's scalable. The nice thing was also shooting with three cameras at the same time because otherwise was, I mean, human, <laughs> human person uh, can resist uh, in a black box like the one with the heat with the focus. I mean, it was pain. It was completely hard. I mean, you need. Uh, I mean, so so it allowed us to shorten a lot the the, the shooting. Uh, also, so at the end, um, we thought, hey, give us some more. I mean, we are already <laughs> <laughs> on the track. Yeah, <laughs> we were alone. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the best is yet to come. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. May, may I ask you another question? But uh, the various parts of the daguerreotypes are uh, digitized individually, so. Eventually, you can dismount it. That, the, Apart it, the interface to dismount, it, but the models of each part the, it, is it, done. It, it's a it's one model. It's, it's, a it's, it's a compact model. Yeah, it's it's compact. Yeah, so it's a, not a, a model of each part. No, it no, no, it's, it's a unique. Model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, like if you took a picture, and, but instead of that, you took many pictures from many. Uh, sides and you assemble everything, so it gives a, 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 a solid yeah, object, a 3D object. Uh, we could split in different parts and make them move, but that would be like artificially. Uh, so, as I said, it's, it's like the 
the pure approach and the pure result of photogrammetry is this. Starting from here, we can add as many special effects, light, uh, positive, negative, artificial um, add-ons, but okay. Um, in fact, the, I think the interesting thing of the project was giving a first like pure approach to photogrammetry. Actually, uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, when we uh, saw the first model for results, uh, we asked them t um, that there are times, depending on the angle, uh, it looks like negative or, uh, or positive. So with photogrammetry that wasn't possible, but uh, they succeeded using an effect. But we didn't accept because uh, then uh, it affects the whole object and uh, these pure results that were mm, um, achieved. So uh, as he said, uh, yes, you can do many things with effects, but you need to assess if it's really worthy or if you accept the limits. Yeah. Well, one thing that we didn't test neither is, is, is using a, a laser uh, scanner. Uh, we don't know what will happen. Um, I guess that, well, mm -hmm. something that somebody could try and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and tell us, or, but um, we had the feeling that photogrammetry results uh, will be um, easier to, to work with to get this result. Because as I said before, the good thing of photogrammetry is that you choose, you select what you keep and what you, you take uh, and, and you take off. So, so that is something that with a laser scan uh, is not that easy to do. Okay. So, but again, uh, perhaps somebody discovers a most efficient way and most precise. You said, no, the technique is everything six months uh, improving and improving. But with uh, these resources, this equipment, and this ambition, I mean, uh, that's the best we could get. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, okay, now Mateusz. <laughs> yeah, I would like to first congratulate to the, for the work. I, I really understand when you say that the, the problems with the moving parts and the reflection, I totally know what you're, you're saying. I think that now, maybe an idea for, for the future. Now that you have this record of uh, these 3D models, you could run uh, an AI, or a machine learning application over it to record all the damages that are on the, tree, on the daguerreotypes. You know, to, to record, I don't know, maybe you, ha you have done it already manually, like uh, human, human powered. But artificial intelligence could run where the glass is broken, which, which of the cases is broken, and so on. You know, to have a really case-by-case -case, uh, documentation what, is, what needs to be repaired, if it's going to be repaired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, that, that's a, a good idea to, to have like an automatization to, to have all this um, 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 well, detail. Um, I think at the end, I think uh, the number of objects is limited, so in a way you could you could do this uh, yeah. by hand, but yeah. easier. So uh, it depends on the number of objects you want. You can to identify the basic uh, damages uh, and and then try to, to to work like this. But uh, I guess it's quite difficult because, for example, one of the main damage uh, for a glass is lixiviation. And when it did start, these little points that you don't know if it's like a simulation or it's a spot there, or maybe it's noise from the digital process. Uh, something uh, like uh, uh, the broken glasses, yes, this, this will be possible. But, uh, and then the, the main problem is the oxygen. If it goes inside, uh, you don't see uh, if it's uh, stamped or not, you need to to, to have the elements separated, so um, uh, we, sh we should think about this a lot. <laughs> but the idea is good, of course. Okay, thank you. Any other question, comment on the last presentation of today? I don't see any. So we are 50 minutes behind schedule, so more or less on time. So, <laughs> Maybe a few closing words. There is uh, something waiting outside, I hope. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we are not going to leave you hungry. <laughs>
<laughs> any case. Uh, I, I, it was an interesting day. Uh, many thanks to, to all the speakers and uh, the audience uh, here in uh, this wonderful place and online. Uh, I think uh, you know, the results of WIF uh, are, in my view, impressive, but I'm very biased here. So uh, let's hope that you also see that the results are valuable and that you, that you can uh, use them uh, in, uh, in your work and uh, you can uh, use them to uh, create uh, more uh, intangible heritage, stories about intangible heritage and promote communities uh, that are at risk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to uh, the host, David, and to all the crew here. And uh, that's it. So let's go for uh, lunch.